So let's spend a few minutes um, talking about how instructions are represented in MIPS. Um, every um, standard instruction can be represented as a series of 32 bits. Um, and those instructions, those 32 bit instructions, will be packaged in one of these three basic instruction formats. Um, we've given these instruction formats labels R format, I format, and J format. Notice that for all three formats there is an opcode. And so if you look at this um, going from uh, 0 all the way out to um, 31. So 0 through 31. So this is a 32-bit value and in fact each one of these are 32-bit values. All instructions are considered 32-bit values. Um, What's common amongst all of them is that they all three have six bits, 26 through 31, right? 26 through 31, um, um, even though the difference between those is, if you, 31 minus 26 is five, but if you count 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, that's six bits. So every instruction has a six bit opcode. Not every instruction has um, a function code. So only the R instructions will have both an opcode and a function code. Um, so we'll come back to this and, and look at how we decode some instructions um, shortly. But just to maybe switch over to MIPS, if we look at this, we have a data segment and we also have a text segment. Um, and so this, since this series of instructions, there's an add immediate, add immediate, and there is an add instruction. So let me put this instruction up here. I'll put in an add instruction right there. Now, notice that the add immediate instructions have immediate values. Um, Right? There's a number that's there that will be embedded in the instruction. And then the add instruction just simply has registers. So um, before we dig into the lecture, let's just kind of do a quick example to talk about instructions or show examples of instructions and how they're represented. So notice, let's go ahead and use our magnifier here. Notice that we have our add, where we're adding registers. Um, they all happen to be the same, S1, S1, S1. And then we have our add immediate. And if we look over here to the left, you see that the most basic implementation of that instruction or use of the instruction is number one, if we use the register numbers versus the register names, we can see those differences. And if you see the add immediate, the dollar sign four, dollar sign zero certainly indicate A0 and register zero. But notice that there is an immediate value. So, and in this immediate value, if you were to look at this closely, you'd see that there are 16 bits. Um, and since, well, this is a hex value. So, um, this hex value um, is, is you will we'll see in the I instruction format that there's a limitation as to how large this number can be. And it certainly there has to be a limitation because we only have 32 bits to represent this information. If we go and look now at this code um, as a 32 bit value, we can see the 0, 2, 3, 1, 8, 8, 2, 0 for a simple add. And then we can see a 0, x, 2, um, the hex 2, 0, 0, um, 4, 0, 0, 0, 7. Notice that there's a 7 here and that there's a 7 here. And then the next instruction, there's a 1 and there's a 1. So these instructions, um, certain instructions actually include the constant or the immediate value. Um, if I take that 7 and change that, maybe let's say I make it a hex um, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. Oops, let's undo this and put that number back in. So I'll make this a 0 hex, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and then I'll assemble it. And if you look at my one, two, three, four that was put in there, you'll see that it's embedded in the instruction. So that's an immediate value. It's an instruction that has the one of its operands already embedded into the instruction itself, into the 32-bit value. So that hex one two three four, um, or the hex yeah the one two three four those sixteen bits would have been stored in a very specific spot in the instruction, um, and what's going to help us decode the instruction are some additional information that you'll find on your reference sheet your green cards, so let's dig into this a bit. We want to be able to identify the instruction category using the MIPS green sheet. And by that I mean look at the opcode and figure out um, which instruction it is. Is it an R, I, or J? Um, and, if it, and then also which instruction um, it is within that. Is it an add or is this a subtract or something like that? Um, and they're going to use the green sheet as our aid to, to translate these values. And this registered transfer logic of the green sheet is going to help us know where to place the values. So the registered transfer logic um, really shows how information is being transferred in amongst the registers. And so I'll bring that up. Um, and we want to finally put it in as a 32-bit value and then 32 bits and then show it as a hex value. So we're going to make heavy use of the green sheet even though it's not green here um, but in your book if you purchase the book and, and then for the copies that are normally distributed in, in class I would make it green um, but your book reference it, references it as a green sheet. So by registered transfer logic what I mean is that um, our instructions will work with typically uh, either one, two, or three different registers and which registers are being used maybe for addition and where that information is being stored. That's going to be indicated um, by this column here. So the way this green sheet is set up, you have the name, or right, like such as an add, add immediate, then you have a mnemonic, which you actually type in. You have the format, is it RI or is it a J type, typically a jump instruction, which would be a J type, and only a few of those. And then the immediate instructions will typically have some type of um, value, maybe a 16-bit value. Um, and then this column over here is going to indicate um, which one is the opcode and which one is the function. And as we just saw, not every instruction has an opcode and a function. Only the R types have an opcode and a function. So as we look at this, you'll see that there's an R type. He has an opcode and a function. Another R type, he has an opcode and a function. So that's not going to be every um, instruction that has an opcode and function. If you just simply see one number, then it's merely an opcode. What that means is that for an add immediate, um, the opcode that's going to fit into the six bits or be placed in is the value eight. All right, so let's see um, what we can do with this, right? Um, the R type instructions. Um, those are primarily um, values which have registers or operations between registers. So the R really just indicates which bits contain register information. Um, if you look at the R type format, um, there's an opcode, but then there's RS, RT, and RD. Quite often we're not shifting instructions left or right, and then there's a function code. So the R instructions will have both an opcode and a function code. The I-type instructions, um, again, it's primarily register information. This is the instruction. These are the registers we're operating with. Um, but they also have an immediate value, right? a constant, a number. So add immediate has an immediate value. Um, 
load word has two registers and it also has an immediate value of four. Store word, two registers and an immediate value of four. So if you look at the number of objects that are here, there's store word, number one, register two, register three, a second rest, second register, that's three pieces, and the fourth piece is um, a constant. So four, store word, there's one, two, three, four bits of information in store word. If you look at um, the I format, it has one, two, three, four pieces of information. And so there's a direct translation between the instruction and how it gets boxed. Um, well, and then we'll see um, J format instructions. Notice that, um, again, R type instructions have six bits on the left and right, so it's kind of bookmarked. Um, so let's pull out the pen here, ink color, pen. So it has six bits. And, um, and then it also has four five-bit fields. So five times four is 20 for there, and then you have six and six, so you're going to get uh, 32 bits all together. I format, six bits again for the opcode, um, and then it's going to have an RS and an RT uh, register, and um, and it's used by load word and store word. So RS and RT are the two. So let's kind of recall quickly that the load word has the format of pulling something out of memory, putting it into a register, let's say S0. It'll have some um, information that corresponds to maybe an array's address, for example, and then maybe an offset. Um, so RT is, and RD are the only, typically they're the, the registers that would be used as targets or destinations. So whatever the number is for this particular register, um, you can expect to find it in this field. Um, the immediate value of 4, you can expect to find it here. And then A0, right, typically is the base. It's the base address of the array. So that's why we're referencing this as the base. And then this um, uh, immediate is going to be added to that base to get you this final address. So the base plus the offset, those two values are going to be added together. And the base, the RS, is going to be that register here, whatever his number is. And then the offset is going to be the immediate value. So we'll see an example of that shortly. So here's a simple, relatively simple example compared to load word stored. It's a simple R instruction, I th right? Let's take a look. Add. So I want to put this into a 32-bit space. Um, so as you go through and try to make sense of this, given that you have these three registers, T0, S1, and S2, you look at this and you have to say, OK, I want to put this into some 32-bit value, whatever that value is. Um, where do I start? Well, you'll always start with the instruction itself. It's an add. And then you have, you have to ask yourself, is that an R, I, or J? And when you go to your, <clears throat> when you go to your green sheet, it turns out that an add instruction has um, an opcode and a function and an R format. So an add instruction um, has an opcode of zero and a um, function code of 20. So knowing that it's an add also tells you 
that it's an R-type instruction. And now that we know that it's an R-type instruction and that we're looking for an opcode and a function, then we can grab the 0 and 20 and indicate that those two values are going to be placed um, in the opcode 0. So it's going to be a 0 represented with 6 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the opcode is a hex 20. And so, I'm sorry, the function is a hex 20. And so since we only have 6 bits, that's going to be a binary. There's my, let's write this here, a binary 2. And then 4 more bits. And that's how we're going to represent a hex 20. Um, so let's take it to the next step. The register transfer language is shown here. And what this is saying is that it's going to take um, one register and another register, add them together, and then transfer that information or store that information into another register. Um, so let's think about the next step then. Knowing that um, the registers that we're using um, we have register 8, register 17, and register 18. We have to use this register transfer logic to know which of these values would be an 8, um, which would be a 17 and an 18. Um, and so since this register, T0, is the one that's the destination, right? That's where we're storing the result of adding these two. Um, that is consistent with what we see here in the RTL, the register transfer logic. The RTL says um, T0, or register 8, is going to be the register that gets clobbered. Or that's the destination register. RS is, and, 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 um, and RT are the two registers being added. RS and RT, 17 and 18. So it's less clear by the register transfer logic which one is 17 and which one is 18. But what we do, um, I'll ask you to memorize that they just go um, from left to right. So we're going to, knowing that this is RD, that's the one thing we know for, for sure. And then the RS and RT, RS and RT are going to be taken from left to right in alphabetical order. So if I were to plot these in, um, or dro uh, drop these in. Um, I have an opcode and a function that looks like this, where these are hex values. So I put in six bits of zeros. I have an RD of eight, so I need a five bit eight. That should be a five. I don't know if you can read that very well. Um, underneath here, so five bits to make up an eight. And we know how to write eight. One, two, four, eight. One, two, four, eight. So when I say a 5-bit 8, I'm saying that we need 5 bits, something like this, to represent an 8. We're also going to need a 5-bit 18, right? Because um, this was register 18. Um, so this add that we're working with, don't forget, it was essentially this right here. I'm going to get rid of the mnemonics and just write the registers as numbers. It's equivalent. So 8, 17, and 18. Um, and so when we're doing the translation, we just put those values directly into their, their boxes. So an 18 um, with 5 bits. Remember, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So an 18 is going to be this with 5 bits. So we need to just put those 5 bits in its box. And so what we have is 17 here, and then we have 18 here, and then we have an 8, 1, 2, 4, 8 here. And so we've done our translation. We've converted our instruction um, from its mnemonic with its registers 
and then we've taken those registers, assigned them boxes, then we've taken each one of those numbers that are placed in their boxes and, and put them into 30, uh, put them into um, bitwise values and ended up with a 32-bit value. So this instruction ends up being 0232420. Let's take a quick exa example. If I were to type in um, add dollar sign 8, dollar sign 17, dollar sign 18, will I end up with a 2324020? So I'm going to modify this code that we're working with. And I'm going to do, I'll type the instruction here, add dollar sign eight, dollar sign 17, dollar sign 18. Um, so that's the instruction, um, the equivalent instruction. And, uh, T0, S1, S2, T0, S1, and S2, T0, S1, and S2, so these two instructions are um, equivalent, just to give me some space I'll just do a no-op instruction. That instruction is really just a 32-bit zero. Let's assemble this and take a look at it. Um, I think uh, T0, T1, and S2. Let's make sure I got those correct. Uh, one of those is wrong. And it is T1. So let's fix that. Yep, that should be T0, S1, S2, so T0, S1, S2, and let's assemble this and maybe try to magnify this a bit. Um, I'll use 200%, 300%. Uh, 200% magnification. So. This is what I typed in, T0, S1, S2. I also typed in 8, 17, and 18. Notice that these two, as far as basic instruction and representation goes, they're exactly the same. And then notice the hex value is 2, 3, 2, 4, 0, 2, 0. So it looks like we did it correctly. And look at where the, these two 32-bit values reside. Each one of those is four bytes, so they sit in memory. Um, at this address, the 004. If you wanted to go down and use um, this kind of memory explorer, you could actually go in and say, let's go look at our memory. And um, what you'll see is uh, the first two instructions are stored in memory, the 2324020. And the second one was a duplicate. There's our no op, our no op, our no op, and then the next instruction, which happened to be a 2318820. And that was this guy here, S1S1, 2318820. So those instructions in order can also be found um, in memory at this address. So it's certainly the text segment based on its address, and it'll show up here based on its address, although Mars will still show you data segment, which is incorrect. It is the text segment um, uh, based on its address. So that's our simple conversion of an R-type instruction. And whether it's an add or a subtraction, um, they will follow that similar pattern. So, um, opcode, 6-bit value. Green sheet will always show the opcode as a 6-bit value. And I've already said this, I think. If there are two values, read them as opcode and function values. Um, if there's only one, then such as what we see here, if there's only one number, it's simply an opcode. If you see two numbers, then it's both opcode and a function. Um, and that's only going to be the case with R-type instructions. Um, 
So it should be fairly easy to identify the opcode for any instruction. Um, because if it's an add, you'll see that the opcode is a zero. If it's an add immediate, it's an opcode of eight. If it's an add immediate unsigned, it's an opcode of nine. If it's an and immediate, it's an opcode of C or 12. Um, so the next um, thing that we're going to look at will be a load word and how you would translate a load word.